Okay, I am an honest person, so I'm gonna be the one to tell you this because apparently no one in your life wants to tell you the truth, but this is why you're single. Okay, you're not single because you're ugly. Shut up about that. That's not why you're single. You're not single because you're unlovable or you're worthless. That has nothing to do with this. Okay, hear me out. You are single because you haven't met the right person because no one gives you a reason to not be single. You haven't even met a person who you want to give the time of your day to, so why would you be in a relationship with the wrong person? Why? Bro, being single is fun. Embrace it because there's gonna be a time when you're in a relationship and you're gonna be like, oh, I remember when I used to be single. Bro, you're single, go have fun. You're single because you haven't met the person who is going to embrace you for everything that you are rather than trying to change you into what they want. Honey boo boo child, you need time alone. You need time out of a relationship. You need time to be in love with you. Story time. Okay, so when I was 14, I was a freshman in high school. At the time, I wasn't really good at school. I wouldn't finish my work. Like, I just, school was not for me. I had this social studies teacher. We'll call him Mr. G. So Mr. G and me got along all the time. Like, this dude would let me get away with whatever. But he also knew that I sucked at finishing my work and turning in my assignments. I had Mr. G first and second semester, but I failed his class first semester. So I decided to try to get it together second semester so I could at least get one credit. The only problem was that he give us assignments literally every single day and me being me i couldn't keep up but i wasn't the only one because there were other kids in the class that were also missing a lot of assignments so mr g gave us a free day to finish all those assignments i took advantage of that day and i finished all my assignments and i even turned in one of the assignments that he had given us that day now i had actually tried for that assignment so i finished it within 10 minutes after that i turned it into mr g thinking nothing of it all of a sudden i see this dude get up with my paper he crumples it up throws it in the trash can, steps on it while it's in the trash can, pours his coffee on it, and then he spits on it. So I look at him and I was like, what'd you do that for? And then he just responds with, you were cheating. I told him that I wasn't cheating and that I can prove it to him. So he was like, okay, bet. And he gave me another paper. I ended up sitting far away from everybody so that way he couldn't think that I was cheating. I finished my assignment in five minutes and gave it to him and I told him that he better pay up and give me extra credit. And he did. He told me that he was sorry, but we ended up laughing in the end because that was such an extra thing to do. Story time about how I crashed my dad's really expensive car. So a little background information. My mom had just got remarried to my stepdad three years ago. And he was this rich asshole who owned a bunch of food trucks and thought he was the shit. Well, at the time I also had a boyfriend. And we had only been dating for like a month and a half. But my boyfriend would always beg me to let him drive my stepdad's car. And I always said no because that was like his child. Like he had children. He could care less about them. His car was more important. Anyway, so the one weekend my parents are out of town and one of my friends was throwing a graduation party. So that whole day my boyfriend was trying to talk me into taking the car and I already knew where my stepdad hid the keys. So I just decided I wouldn't drink that night and I would just take the car. He kept asking me if he could drive but clearly I said no because this kid literally told me that he crashed the first two cars that he had. So we get to the party, we're having a good time and one of my friends tells me that everybody's taking pictures with my car outside. Like for part two too about how i crashed my dad's very expensive car so like i said everybody's taking pictures of the car but i decided to let it go at first i mean there was one point where i went outside just so that way i could kind of let everybody know hey you're taking pictures with my car well half an hour later my boyfriend and i decided to leave and he's obliterated like we probably got 50 feet from her house and then i had to stop the car so that way he could get out and throw up in somebody's yard anyway so he gets in the car we're on the way back to my house and my house was like a 20 minute drive away well we were five minutes from my house at this one intersection i get a green light and i go to make a right and i accidentally hit a car turning out of the bar parking lot so i'm literally freaking the fuck out and my boyfriend's in the seat next to me crying for some reason so the guy in the other car calls the cops the cops show up they call my stepdad and my mom my boyfriend went to the hospital he had alcohol poisoning well my boyfriend told his mom that it was all my fault and i'm grounded for six months he poked holes in the condoms without me knowing and now i'm pregnant when i found out about this i was distraught i'm not gonna lie but the way i found out is insane let's get into it so during college i was pretty sexually active I hooked up with guys on the regular and didn't do relationships because I always had bad experiences dating someone. And I just didn't find anyone worth my time. So I met this one guy, let's call him Damien. Damien was a wannabe gangbanger. Some people said he's legit, but I didn't really care what he was. He had a lot of money too. He swiped up on my Snapchat story and said I had a nice body and he wanted to hit and I was down. So when we first met up, he had this nice place, almost like a mansion. So we did our thing and that was that. The aftercare was pretty good too, I'm not gonna lie. 
Then when I was about to leave, he asked me where I was going and I said home. He suggested that I should stay. I told him I didn't want to, so he gave me a ride home. Before I got out the car, he asked me out on a date. My gut was telling me no, but I decided to go anyways. So the next day, he picked me up at 8 p.m. in his Mercedes. So we ended up going to the restaurant and he took me to a super expensive restaurant. You will not believe what restaurant it was. Come back for part two. We went on the date and he took me to the super expensive restaurant. He took me to Mastro's Steakhouse and when I tell you that was the best steak I ever had, it was amazing. So we popped the question again, if I've made up my mind and if I decided I was going to give him a chance. Why not? He had money, doing the dirty was great, and he seemed like a pretty genuine guy. So I made it official with him. So I had to drop all of my hoes and just stay loyal to him. They were mad, but I didn't care. So the whole school ended up learning about it and some people were happy for me and some people weren't. Some people said he was a cheater. I didn't care, he had money. So one day there was this girl who slid up on my Instagram telling me I shouldn't trust him and that he's bad news. I told Damien about it and he made me block her on everything, which was kind of weird so one day he came over like usual and i told him i was going to take a shower before doing anything i have cameras set up in my house mind you because i just do for safety reasons so when i came back we ended up doing the dirty but he told me the condom broke and i freaked out i demanded that he get me a plan b and he did but he seemed super upset about it he left without even saying goodbye or i love you i asked him what was wrong and he just ignored me something was very very off i remember that girl that messaged me about him so i unblocked her and you will not believe what she said come back for part three then I thought about that girl from long ago. I was curious about what she would have said. I unblocked her and contacted her explaining everything. And what she told me was unbelievable. She sent me pictures of him being emotionally abusive over text. She sent me voice recordings of him threatening her and showed me bruises on her face, all that. And screenshots of him cheating. She also showed me a picture of him poking holes in her condoms. She said she had to get an abortion because of that. And the reason why he did that was an attempt to trap her and make them connected forever. She found out because she wanted to test how strong the new condoms were, so she just put it underwater and found holes. So, I decided I was going to do a test on him. The next day, I invited him over again, told him I was going to take a shower, and left. My cameras were recording as well, just to see if he was lying. I finished my shower, came back, and he didn't open the condoms yet. I tried looking at the bag, but he snatched it and just told me to relax. I snatched the bag back from him and examined the condom and it had three itty bitty holes in it. I looked at another one and it was poked as well. I looked at him and said, Damien, what is this shit? And you will not believe what he responded with. Come back for part four. I snatched the bag from him and examined the condom and it had three itty bitty holes in it. Damien, what is this shit? And he looked shocked and said he didn't know. I told him he poked holes in it and he got super mad and told me I was lying. I told him to get out and he grabbed my wrist saying no. I said to leave before I called the cops and he did. He was clearly lying. But the last and final test, the cameras. I opened my spine cam window on my browser and saw him just sitting there for 10 minutes. Then he took out a needle from his pocket and began poking holes in the condoms. He did it for like 10 of them, which is insane. He was literally trying to impregnate me. And he also could have gave me a disease. I immediately scheduled an appointment for Planned Parenthood and got tested. They did a screening on me for STDs and I was negative. They did a pregnancy test and however, I was positive. I was pregnant. She asked me what I wanted to do with it and I didn't know. So I scheduled another appointment to check back in for two weeks. I'm not really sure what to do. I don't know if I want a baby. I'm not mentally or physically prepared to do so. Help this girl out in the comments down below. Follow for more story times and follow my Instagram as well. So last night I was followed home and I'm leaving. So I was at my friend's house till around midnight last night and that's when I decided to start heading home. So I'm heading home when this red truck like turns off of a road and they flash their brights into my car and then go behind me. I don't think anything of it, I don't overthink it and I don't care. He's behind me for a good maybe five miles and I'm not thinking anything of it until this dude starts slowing down a lot. Like he's going maybe 10 miles an hour behind me. And that's when I started like freaking out a little bit because why are they going so slow? But then eventually they turned down a side road. So I was like, okay, I'm fine, whatever. So I keep going down this road when I see the car waiting for me at another side road. Meaning they went in a circle to try to cut me off. And when I drove past their truck on this side road, they flashed their brights into my car again. And then they went behind my car again. So I started speeding and I went into my neighborhood. I don't know if he was behind me at this point, but I pulled my car into the garage so he wouldn't know where I lived. Stay safe. Y'all, so I'm about to get my car taken away again. So basically somebody had thrown hot dogs all over my house yesterday. Here's a video of it. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
literally not even a big deal. Like, it's funny. I got a good laugh out of it. And then I picked every single hot dog up. I threw it away. Got a good laugh. Thought it was funny. End of story. It was a good night. And this all happened while my dad was at work. So he was unaware that hot dogs were all over the front yard and shit. So I had left one hot dog in the grass because I had forgotten to pick it up. I get a call from my dad this morning. Oh my god. He was pissed. You disrespected my house by having a hot dog in the front yard. I want them all cleaned up. This is disgusting. It's a freaking hot dog. So I'm getting my car taken away because I had a hot dog in the front yard. Story time about a catfish that went way too far. My coworker Ron was always looking for girls way above his league on dating apps and social media. If the girl didn't look like a supermodel, he wasn't interested. He would always complain that the girls he liked would never respond. To make matters worse, Ron isn't the best looking guy in the world and he'd been out of the dating scene for a few years. We told him to lower his standards and be more realistic, but he wouldn't budge. One of my other coworkers named Jason decided to give him what he wanted and made a fake Facebook profile pretending to be a beautiful girl named Bella. He set her location to Canada and messaged Ron. Ron took the bait and they began messaging back and forth for months. He would always talk about Bella and how he couldn't wait to go to Canada to meet her. He was looking at plane tickets and talking about how he's been saving up for this trip. I was starting to think that this joke was going too far, but I hadn't seen anything yet. Ron came to work one day distraught and said that Bella had gotten into a terrible car accident and is in a coma that she wasn't expected to come out of. He said Bella's sister messaged him last night and told him the news. I figured Jason must have gotten bored of catfishing Ron and this was his way of killing Bella off and being done with